Chapter 3, Day 6, Vertex Form. Okay, so to start out, we now have three ways that we can solve quadratic equations. So solving these things, uh, one, we could factor it and set the factors equal to zero. So we got factoring, we solved it that way. Um, two, you know you can always solve it using the quadratic formula. And then now a third way we have to solve these things, um, whether or not it's factorable, is by completing the square. So those are three ways that we can solve quadratic equations. So let's try, uh, I know you can do factoring and quadratic formula at this point. Let's try solving one with completing the square. So the first example here, the directions are just solve by completing the square. And here's the equation, x squared minus 2x equals 5. Okay, so Completing the square, we're supposed to focus on the x terms first, group those up, um, and then add b over 2 squared. We can do that. Um, a lot of people like to move this 5 over first, which is totally fine. Some people like to leave it on this side. I don't care either way. I'm going to move it over for now. So I'm going to subtract 5 and just get everything on one side, set equal to 0. And now you can answer the question, is it factorable, yes or no? Factors of negative 5 that add up to negative 2? I don't think so. Not factorable. So either you go with quadratic formula, or if you're good at this, this would be more effective. You can do completing the square to solve this thing. So now let's focus on the x terms there. Group those up. And there's nothing in front of the x squared, so we don't have to factor anything out of this right now. That's good. So then let's add in, inside these parentheses, b over 2 squared. So that should be an easy number. Negative 2 over 2 is negative 1, and then square that. So pretty much we're just going to add in 1 in there. And then make sure when you add it inside the parentheses, you also subtract it on the outside of the parentheses. let's simplify this a little bit. This factors really nicely, that's the whole point. That's x minus 1 squared, and then out here we just have minus 6. So, if we want to get this thing, if we want to solve for this, this is equal to 0. Let's move this 6 over, so add 6 to both sides, because now we're going to try to get answers for x. We're going to get like x equals a number. So let's get to it. Let's add the 6 over. So we have x minus 1 squared equals 6. So we did completing the square, simplified it. Now we're going to try to get answers for x. Let's get x by itself. So nothing to factor, nothing, just let's get x by itself. So add the 6 over. Now, how do I get to the x? Well, since it's squared here, let's undo that. Let's square root both sides. And don't forget, when you take the square root, it's got to be plus minus, because we took the square root of a variable here. So plus minus square root of 6. I'm just going to leave it at square root of 6, so that's not a nice number. Then our last step, we just add 1. So add 1 to both sides. And our two answers, we get x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 6. Well, that's already simplified, too. If you did that with quadratic formula, that would take quite a few steps of simplification to get here. So if you're good with completing the square, that's actually sometimes a little quicker, a little more effective than a quadratic formula. Okay, so that's, that's my example for you. Uh, the next one is for you to do on your own. So I want you to solve by completing the square. And here is the equation. 3x squared equals 6x plus 18. So you can use what we just talked about to solve this thing using completing the square. So since it's on your own, um, I'm going to check to make sure you have the correct work that goes with this. But I'm going to give you the solution right now so you can work towards this. The solution you get done for x, 1 plus or minus the square root of 7. So you can go ahead and pause it, do that one on your own, check, check and make sure you get that, and then we're going to move forward. So vertex form, talked about this a little bit before, looks like this. So it's a quadratic written this way y equals a, leading coefficient, same for any form, and you have x minus h squared plus k. And the big perk, if you see something written in vertex form, right away you can point out the vertex. The vertex would just be hk. Just make sure that 
the H has the opposite sign of whatever's in the equation. Uh, X of symmetry, that'll always be X equals whatever this number is here for H. Okay, so a uh, quick example, not a whole lot of math to do on this one. Y equals negative 2 X plus 3 squared minus 1. So you should be able to point out the vertex right away. That 3 and that negative 1, we're going to use both of those. So the vertex, make sure we take the opposite sign here. That's a negative 3, negative 1. And the axis of symmetry will be x equals whatever this number is, so negative 3. Uh, one other thing you should be able to tell right now whether, is whether it opens up or down. And the fact of this a value here, the number out front, a is negative, that tells you it opens down. So the third thing you know about this is that it opens down. So we could actually make a rough sketch of this right now. If you know the vertex, it opens down. So vertex is at negative 3, negative 1. Opens down, and then I just wanted to go ahead and just illustrate here axis of symmetry. x equals negative 3. That's a vertical line that goes through negative 3. And that's also a line that cuts this thing perfectly in half. And that will always be the x value from the vertex. Okay, um, why is vertex form, why is that um, related to completing the square? Because you'll notice every time we do completing the square, we always get something like this. X plus or minus a number squared, and then we have something left over out here. So we can use completing the square to get to vertex form. Then observe what's the vertex, axis of symmetry, open up or down. Okay, last example here. Example three. I want you to find a formula for the parabola. What parabola? This awesome one we're about to draw. We're going to give a rough, rough sketch here. So it's open, opening up. My vertex is going to be at negative 2, 5. So you should sketch this parabola. Vertex is at negative 2, 5, wherever that is. I didn't give you the scale, really. And then the y-intercept that hits over here, that'll be a 6. Again, probably not drawing a scale, but it doesn't really matter for this for example. So this is something you'll be expected to do. If I just give you a drawing or some information about the parabola, and I want you to find the formula. So you need to use the piece of information that are given to you. This is identified as the vertex. And then you have, this is a point. That's the y-intercept. So the, that's 0, 6. That's the y-intercept at 6. <clears throat> so given these two pieces of information, can you write the formula? Well, the easiest way to go about that, for sure, wouldn't be standard form, wouldn't be factored form. Jump right into vertex form. So let's jump right into vertex form. We know the vertex is negative 2, comma 5, and we know a point on the graph, 0, comma 6. So I'm going to add that in here too. We know the vertex, and we also know a point at 0, comma 6. Okay. So let's go to vertex form. So I already know the h and the k, right? These give me, the negative 2 and the 5 give me h and k. So the only thing I don't know right now is actually the a value. Otherwise, I almost have my formula right away. I'm almost done. I know the h because it's got to be the opposite of that right there. I know the k is just this 5. So how do I get the A? And this is where everyone always gets stuck. So I want you to think about that for a second. How would I get the A value out? Well, so far we've only used one piece of information. We've used the vertex, and that gave us the 2 and the 5 there. But we were given another piece of information, this point right here. It hits 6 right there, so that's 0, 6. Let's use this other piece of information we're given to solve this. Well, if there's a point at 0, 6, we should be able to plug in these values for x and y. And then everything else will be gone. All the other variables will be gone except for a, and that will give us what a is. And then we can have our whole equation correct. So the trick here is go, let's go ahead and substitute that point in. Let's, the other piece of information we have, let's use it. Substitute a point for x, y in this equation. We know the y will be 6 the x will be 0. So 
this is our x, y here. Okay, so plug the 6 in for the y. Plug the 0 in for the x. And this should get a lot easier. 0 plus 2, do the parentheses first. That's 2, square it, that would be 4. So I really have 6, a times 4 plus 5. Get ahead of myself here. So if I want to solve this for a, pretty simple. Do the easy stuff first. Subtract 5 from both sides, then divide by 4. I should be good. So let's subtract the 5 over. So I have 1 equals a times 4. Divide by 4. I get a equals 1 fourth. That's really good. That was all the heavy lifting. So now, what is our formula? You know the a value, so you can give this entire formula correctly. So y equals 1 fourth x plus 2 squared plus 5. Great, so that's vertex form. We got the formula. Now, one last little thing I want to ask you. What's this equation look like in standard form, and how would you get there? Remember, standard form is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. It's all, like, expanded out. So the point is, if you have to go from vertex form to standard form, that's all you have to do is multiply everything out. So to multiply this out, the first thing we would have to do is FOIL this x plus 2 term, right? Square this. That's like x plus 2 times x plus 2. And uh, we've gone over the shortcut for that, too. So for this x plus 2 squared, square the first term, multiply these together, and double it, so that's 4x, and then square the last term. So square that, that's 2 squared is 4. So, so what's that look like? Square the first term, multiply them together, and double it, that's 4x. Square the last term, that's 4. So, you, I mean, you can write x plus 2 times x plus 2 and FOIL it out, but that's the shortcut. Okay, and we're almost there to standard form. Just distribute that 1 fourth through. It actually simplifies a couple things. So 1 fourth x squared, and then 1 fourth times 4, that's just x plus 1 plus 5. So our answer in standard form, after we simplify it here, combine like terms, y equals 1 fourth x squared plus x plus 6. So in terms of finding a formula, we were done right here. We got vertex form, that's good. But now, um, just to be clear, if you want to get it in standard form, multiply everything out, expand everything out, now you have something that looks like ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, that's all for these notes. Don't forget about the problem you have to do on your own, because I'm going to check that uh, tomorrow for credit also. See you in class.